So this is a millimeter wave radar human presence sensor. Specifically, this is the LD2410B. And these things are pretty darn cool. So here on the back, you will see this is the actual antenna system. And with this thing, I intend to fix one little problem that I have in my home automation setup. And it's a problem that home automation caused. And so I'm gonna use this sensor and home automation to fix it. You see, every day in the morning, my lights come on at 6 a.m. in the living room. And if I'm still asleep, sometimes that wakes me up because I've got the door open to my room and the lights kind of shine in there. Now, I could just shut the door, but that's worse for HVAC air circulation. Plus, I have a fat little dog that sometimes likes to get up in the middle of the night, eat an entire bowl of food, and then just drag his bloated gut into the room to sleep. A further thing about my dog is obviously he can't open doors because his inferior genetics that biology has given him left him bereft of thumbs so the door's got to stay open. So this thing should help me set some rules so that the lights only come on if a person is sensed in the living room during that time. And then I can make them automatically come on at like, you know, eight in case I'm not already out of bed to kind of, you know, motivate myself. If you haven't kind of ever thought about this, most home automation is purely driven by laziness. So as far as wiring this sensor, it's not super complicated. There's only five pins, and so on the left, you've got your power pin, and that's gonna be five volt, not 3.3. Then you're gonna have a ground pin, and then the other three pins are for communication. Now the two in the middle are RX and TX for UART communication. The one all the way on the right, that is a binary, on off kind of high low presence pin so you either wire this thing up uart or you use that binary pin you don't have to use both so you're looking at either three pins or four pins depending on how you end up wanting to use the sensor now i decided to use uart because if you use the high low pin that binary pin you lose all the ability to configure the sensor I wired the RX and TX to the corresponding RX and TX pins for a UART port on an ESP32. In software, you can change which pin is which. So I've read conflicting things on different boards of how people had to wire these up. You can always change it in software. Another note on these is if you've got one of the ESP, like the 8266s or the older style, the, the lower end chips, people have been pretty adamant that you need to use hardware UART for that, so make sure you choose the right pins, but on an ESP32, it's less important. So with that, we can go over to ESP Home and Home Assistant, and the configuration is pretty straightforward. There's already a component built for these sensors, and I am using just a straight vanilla setup with that. And so as far as the YAML code, I'm not really gonna go line by line because you can pretty much just follow the recommended setup and then build a card in your Lovelace dashboard for all the sensors and switches and everything that get created by that ESP Home configuration. Now, once you have the YAML code set up and everything pulling in, then you've got your configuration if you want to tweak any of the settings. And I'm not, again, going to go into super detail about that. Uh, I find that you know, the guy with the Swiss accent has already done a video where he explains all the different buckets and things that you can tweak and their sensitivities. And that all holds for the functionality in Home Assistant and ESP Home because they've just made an interface so that you can tweak that stuff instead of going through the direct like Bluetooth app for these things. So that's the stuff I've still got to get set up for this sensor to kind of tweak it to make sure it works how I want. These sensors are really, really, really small, as you can see. So my original plan was just mount it behind this ink screen, kind of in the middle. That way it would be hidden and, you know, it would just sense wherever this thing was faced. But the millimeter wave radar, something about this panel interfered with the sensor. So that was a no-go. So I was able, because this thing is so thin, just to mount it below the screen embedded in the frame. And that ended up also not working as well as I thought it should. But uh, the more I read up on these things, and there is a manual that the original maker of these has put out, it's kind of a poor translation from Chinese into English. But best I can tell, 
you can really only have like a millimeter or two of plastic in front of this thing before it starts having problems. And the bezel I'm working with was probably too thick and there was probably just too much plastic in front of this thing. So even though I thought it would penetrate, it just wasn't. So what I ended up doing is just trimming out a hole, clearing out the infill between the sensor and the front of the frame here. So now there's only a couple of layers of PLA in there and it does work quite a bit better now. Now, after the last couple days of testing, I will say that the sensor mostly works. However, I don't have it quite fully calibrated as far as still versus moving energy. And sometimes when I'm laying on the couch in the living room, it loses me because I don't know, it's there's other stuff in there, coffee tables and things that get in the way. And maybe it's just not able to really pick up my body. I would also kind of like to tune it to pick me up and not my dog if I can, because I don't want the lights coming on just because he's walking through there. But again, that's just going to be some tweaking over time. I do think it works well enough to achieve my goals, but it's not working out quite as smoothly as I originally thought it would. So does it work? Yeah, is it perfect? No, not really. I do think it's probably good enough. And so with that, I'll end this video here. If you got any questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below.